What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 1. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Account 1. I doubt that anyone will see this, but what the hell, I will share my sister's experience. My sister and brother-in-law used to live on base. Brother-in-law is in the Air Force, and as far as I know, this is the only strange thing that happened in that house. One day, my sister and her husband were sitting on the couch playing on their phones when my sister asked my brother-in-law to get her a bottle of water from the fridge. Being the lazy people they are, he said he would in a minute. About five minutes later, they both look up and see a bottle of water just sitting there on the coffee table. Neither one had gotten up at all. Not really scary, but definitely unexplainable. Account 2. One time, my mom and I were sitting in the living room watching TV. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this black thing come through the wall, then float down through the floor. It was kind of like a shaped black smoke, very black. I thought it was just a floater in my eye or something as I sat there staring at it. Then I thought I was just tired and seeing things. A moment later, my mom asked me if I had just seen that. That is when I got goosebumps. We had no idea what it was. Account 3. This is a long one, but my old house was haunted. At least if you believe in ghosts. If you do not, there is not much I can really say to make you believe me, and I do not really care either way, but we did have some local ghost hunters come by and check it out, and they freaked out and said it was the most haunted house they had ever been in. It was not an old house. My father built it back in, like, 92, but it was only a couple of hundred yards from a cemetery, and the basement was underground, so you were pretty much on the same level the coffins would be. We had all kinds of really weird stuff happen there. You would hear people talking, but you could not understand the words. You would hear floorboards creaking as people walked around and doors would open and close, etc. One that really stands out was when my father and I were in our basement. That was his den. He had a TV and chair and all his man cave stuff down there, and we were watching TV. My mother and sisters were out of town, so we knew we were alone. We heard a door slam upstairs and then heard someone walk across the house to my parents' bedroom, directly above my father's den. We heard drawers open and be pulled out, so we assumed it was burglars. He grabbed a gun, and I got a bat, and we ran upstairs to see, but there was nothing there. Nobody was in any room, and nothing was moved or taken, but we both heard it clear as day. Speaking of his den, you could hear his TV on 24-7. When I was home alone... I would lay on my parents' floor and listen to the TV through the floor. You could hear the TV on with people talking. I would go downstairs and put my ear to the door leading into his area, and you could still hear the TV going. But when you opened the door, it was never on. That kind of thing happened all the time. Two separate times, a group of people saw a woman in a white dress standing at the base of the stairs in the basement. Once was when my sister had a sleepover with like eight or nine girls sleeping in the downstairs family room. Someone woke up and saw the woman and started screaming, and the rest all woke up and saw her, too. They swear she stood there for a few seconds, then slowly backed into the darkness. My mother saw her in the same spot a few years later when she says the woman stepped right off the wall beside her and just walked right past her without looking at her. I mentioned the ghost hunters going there as well. They were a local group, pretty much the only one in the area, and loved going to creepy places looking for ghosts. My uncle was one of them, which was how they got involved. He had heard us talk about the house and was obsessed with trying to get in and test it. My father always told him no and joked, saying the ghosts were friendly, and he did not want to make them mad by bringing in ghost hunter types to antagonize them. He finally relented and said sure because we were moving and had the house sold. They came in after we were moved out and did whatever it is they do. The new owners were friends of his and did not care if he came in and did it, and they had already moved some stuff in. My uncle said that within seconds of them just asking the ghost if they were there, they could hear a door slam downstairs. They asked simple questions like, If you can hear me, open this cabinet door, and said it would happen. Then they asked if they were angry. My uncle described the response as, as soon as we asked if they were angry, there came the most unearthly yowling and shrieking sound from the basement. What it was, was the new owner's cat that was downstairs. 
It started flipping out and then sprinted up the stairs and started attacking the door at the top of the stairs, wanting out of the basement like it was running from something. After the new owners moved in, they had all kinds of weird stuff happen to them, too. For one, they said the cat would never go downstairs again. The family had the wife's father living with them because he was old and dying. He could barely get around but was not on the verge of death or anything. He was just old. They came home one day to him babbling about a man walking up and sitting at the dining room table next to him while he was eating. He kept saying the guy would not talk to him or look at him. He just sat there for a while, then got up and went downstairs. So there are my experiences. There is not any way to prove any of it really, but the house is still there, and last I heard from the new owners, they still experience creepy stuff all the time. There were a billion other minor things I did not include because it would take too long. I lived there for 16 or 17 years, so I had more than my fair share of weird stuff. TLDR, house was haunted and weird stuff happened a lot. Ghost hunter guys came in and it scared them too. Dozens of people all experienced the creepy stuff. I am not sure what was going on. The logical side of me says there must have been some kind of explanation, but I do not know what it was. Account 4. When I was six years old, I had a cat named Buster. Buster was actually my stepdad's cat, but because I never had a cat before, I claimed him as my own. Suffice it to say, Buster did not like being hugged and coddled all the time by a little child. So he hated me. He avoided me at all costs. He was also an outdoor cat, so he would often spend most days outside and then come in for the night. One night, Buster did not come back in the house. We usually fed him at night, so I was worried. Our area was also well known for an abundance of coyotes. My parents were being a bit hush-hush about Buster's disappearance, but I did not get the hint. That night, when I was drifting off to sleep, Buster jumped onto my bed. He lay down by my head and let me pet him until I fell asleep. Honestly, I was shocked because he had never done this before. The next morning, I triumphantly walked downstairs and related to my parents that Buster now loved me because he slept in my bed during the night. My parents looked at me inquisitively and sat me down at the breakfast table to let me know that while they were outside the night before, they had found Buster's body in the alley behind our house. They thought he had been harassed by a coyote, but he was dead, so he could not have slept in my bed that night. To this day, I like to think that Buster just wanted to say goodbye and thank me for trying to love him in the only way a child knew how. Account 5. My family owns a decent-sized horse boarding facility, and when we first had it going, we used to do bed checks as a family. Bed check is just making sure all the lights and fans were off as well as looking at the horses for injuries, and if they had blankets during the winter. Well, we had just gotten back from eating out, and it was a moonless night during fall. As we stepped out of the truck, this large, light gray mass stood up and took off loping towards our pastures. It was about the size of a single cab pickup truck. It made no noises other than it hitting the ground as it ran. The only other proof that it was real to us was the horses that were turned out that night screamed and stampeded across the pasture it had jumped into. We did a double count of all the horses that night and not a single one was missing. I still have yet to see it again. And I hope I never do, or at least there is some explanation for it. 6. When I was in university, I lived by myself. It was a nice little studio unit behind a house in a fairly decent area. I would honestly think nothing of walking places at night. There was a 24-hour McDonald's and a 7-Eleven that I would walk to, often between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m., since I was a massive night owl. Well, one day after finishing an essay at about 2 in the morning, I decided I was hungry but did not really have anything easy to cook, so I decided to walk down to the 7-Eleven and grab a pie or something. However, as soon as I opened my door, I was overcome by a suffocating feeling of fear. My heart started pounding, I started shaking, the works, telling myself that this was ridiculous. I walked out to the street with the intent to still go, but that was as far as I got. I was terrified for no reason that I could understand, but no less intensely despite that. I ran back inside and ate dry cereal. Later the next day, I heard about a group of drunk guys that were causing havoc down near the intersection at the 7-Eleven. They had beaten up someone from my university. Even though I cannot explain it, I am convinced something bad would have happened to me that night if I had ignored that feeling and gone anyway. Account 7. It was near Halloween time when my friends and I were telling ghost stories. 
My friend said she was going to tell a story about her parents' first date. She said she did not like telling the story, since it was actually true, but we prodded her on. To cut to the chase, the parents had spent a nice, if awkward, first date, and around the time that they would have said, good night, the male in the situation, my friend's dad, suggested that they go for a midnight hike up Provo Canyon. He apparently knew the place, since he had done a fair amount of rock climbing in the area. So the two drove up the mouth of the canyon, got out of their cars, and started hiking under just the light of the stars since it was a new moon. At some point, the male starts getting a bad feeling since the pathway ahead, which would pass under some trees, would be dark, and because it was getting to be quite late. He ignores the feeling and presses on. In later rehearsings of the story, the female would say that she had felt the same feeling at what was probably the same time, though she did not know the trail like he did. A minute later, the feeling came back to the male. He ignored it again and started walking a bit of the way into the trees when his foot hit something soft in the middle of the path. Under the trees, it was too dark to see just what this soft thing was, and the feeling came back stronger than ever. Instead of finding out what his foot had bumped into, he and the female both agreed to hightail it out of there. Years later, after being married for some time, they were watching an interview with the serial killer, Ted Bundy. In response to a question asking him to describe the time that he felt the closest to being caught, he explained about the night that he lured a girl into Provo Canyon and had just killed her when he heard some people coming up the trail. He explained how he hid in the trees just in time, only to watch some guy walk right into the body and for some reason just turn around and walk away. Tiel dear, friend's parents stumbled onto a fresh corpse left by Ted Bundy on their first date. Count eight. I woke up from an unsettling dream because my wrists were really sore. It turns out my boyfriend at the time had his hands clamped tightly around my wrists because I had fully tried to strangle him in his sleep and he was trying to get me off his throat. To this day, I have no memory or idea why I was strangling him. TLDR tried to strangle past boyfriend in my sleep. Count nine. My parents had been married for maybe a month. They were in bed sound asleep when all of a sudden my mom jumps up and wakes up my dad. Jimmy, Jimmy, there is blood everywhere. We have to help them, please. My dad tried his best to calm her down and figure out what she was talking about. My mom explained that she saw a car with a German license plate on the side of the road that there had been an accident and they needed help. My dad tried to console her and explain that it was all just a bad dream, but she was not having it. So, to appease her, they got in the car and drove to the spot my mom thought the accident was. And sure enough, at the exact spot my mom said, there was a car on the side of the road with German plates and emergency flashers on. Upon closer investigation, there was nobody in the car. If they needed help, help had already come. Count 10. My parents had just had their first child, my oldest sister, Kathy. They had been living in Italy at the time. My dad was in the Air Force and had brought her back to the U.S. to introduce her to the grandparents, my dad's parents. So their first night there, my mom was asleep in the front bedroom, jet-lagged. My dad had gone out to hang out with his brothers. And in the middle of the night, this woman walks into my mom's room, waking her up. She sits down on the bed and says, shh, it is okay. I just wanted to welcome you to the family. My mom was scared, obviously, but figured this was some relative or family friend or something that came over. The woman walks over to the bassinet where my baby sister was sleeping. Is this your daughter? My mom nodded. She is beautiful. It is lovely to meet you both. And then she leaves. My mom wakes up the next day and is having breakfast with my grandmother when she brings it up. Who was the woman that came over last night? My grandmother had no idea what she was talking about. My mom told her the whole story, and my grandmother asked what she looked like. My mom said she was tall, had long white hair, and was wearing a blue dress. My grandmother's face went as white as a sheet. She rummaged through some old pictures and pulled one out. Is this her? She asked my mom, who nodded in return. That is my mother. She has been dead for 20 years, and we buried her in a blue dress. Account 11. Probably too late, but here goes. I was working at a hotel in Albuquerque, the graveyard shift. I had been talking to the security guard, and he asked if he could get a ride home, so instead of waiting for 30 minutes for my shift to end, I just left and left a note for my boss that said I left early because my brother was stranded outside of town and needed me to get him. Total lie on my part, 
but I needed a good excuse to leave early. I dropped off the security guard at his place, then went home and went to sleep. A couple of hours of sleep and I wake up to my phone ringing. It was my brother. He tells me he is stranded outside of town and he needs me to go get him. I tell my brother the lie I told my boss and how much of a coincidence his calling me is. He says that's not weird. He will show me what's weird when I get there. I get there and ask him what is weird. He puts his phone up to my ear and plays a message that he got when he woke up that morning. It's a voice that kind of sounded computerized, but mostly just creepy sounding. It says, you're stuck. It freaked us both out. Never figured out where the call came from. Strangest, creepiest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Account 12. In my childhood home, I would often hear touch typing coming from the computer downstairs early in the mornings. I didn't think much of it at first. My parents worked from home, and it wouldn't be uncommon to wake up in the morning to hear mom typing away at the computer. One day, I got up and called out to mom, assuming she was down there working as I could hear typing. No answer. No one was down there at all. I was sure I heard typing. This began happening regularly. I figured I was so used to hearing typing from downstairs that I was hearing things that weren't there, so I didn't mention anything to anyone, figuring I was going a bit crazy. This happened on and off over a period of six months. The sound of fast typing and fast, furious clicking of a mouse as if someone was frustrated. One morning, I was eating my breakfast when I heard Mum at the top of the stairs call out to me, You're not down there on that computer already? I froze and ran out to her. I was amazed she had heard it too. She was convinced she could hear typing, yet no one was down there. I told her about all the times I'd been hearing it, and then my sister opened up about hearing it regularly too when no one was down there. I wasn't crazy after all. I set out to try to catch whatever was causing it and to try to discover a rational explanation for it. I'd sprint out of my bedroom to the top of the stairs where I was able to look down into the room to see if anyone was at the computer. No such luck, every time I got there it stopped. I think it went on for a couple of years, and we learned just to kind of live with it as it wasn't every day. I was down there once when the ceiling light globe in the center of the room began flashing very fast, strobe-like. It then exploded, and glass went shattering all across the room. I was lucky I ran out of the room when it started happening because I was scared. The whole mysterious typing, you know. If I hadn't run, I would have been hit with bits of light bulb. Around that same time, I was on the computer at home by myself when something happened that resulted in me never being alone in that room again. I felt and heard this really sharp intake of breath directly behind my right shoulder near my ear. I've never run so fast in my life and was hesitant about going in that room ever again. Prior to that, the whole typing thing had just been something weird and a bit spooky, not scary. Still makes my heart race when I think about it today. I have never really encountered anything like this before or since all those events. I don't particularly believe in ghosts either, but I'm open to the possibilities of something for which scientists don't have a proper explanation yet. TLDR Ghost was a proficient touch typer who had a breathing problem. Account 13. I'm a little late, but screw it. I was in first grade hanging out at recess with a friend. He was shooting some hoops outside and I was playing DS, sitting on the pavement. I remember him asking me if he could make a shot from halfway across the court. I told him he could try, but he probably wouldn't make it while looking at my DS. Suddenly my dad asks me what I mean, and when I look up, I'm sitting on my living room carpet talking to my dad, and it's dark out. I was sitting in the same position, playing the same game, same level, and same exact spot in the level. Everything continued normally that night, and I didn't tell anyone at the time, but looking back, it is really freaky. I thought it was a dream for the longest time, but thinking about it, it didn't really feel like a dream. And I don't really remember dreams that well. TLDR teleported through space and time once. Account 14. I was probably five years old, I was going to bed one evening, and I was overcome by the feeling that if I blinked, it would be the next morning. I blinked, and it was daylight. The night had passed immediately. I had the same feeling and tested the feeling for three straight nights. Then the feeling left, and it never again happened. Still remember it 30 years later. Account 15. Pretty sure I lived in a haunted house for a while. Strange things. For one, I always felt like I was being watched in my room, and if I had the door open to the hallway, I would swear I'd see someone walk by out of the corner of my eye. We had two cats. 
and sometimes they'd be in my room sleeping, and then all of a sudden they would sit bolt upright and stare at the door, and nothing I did could move them for a long time. This happened often. One day in my bathroom, the shelf that had my sister's beauty stuff randomly lost hold of all the items. The thing was, the shelf wasn't loose or hanging, and all the stuff had to bounce out of a two-inch high lip into the sink. One time in the middle of the night, my sister's 100-plus-year-old dresser she got as a gift from our grandma just fell over. This thing weighed a ton, and it was built like a tank. Sister said she heard the sound of someone pushing. Mom and sister used to yell at me for sneaking around the house only I wasn't home or I was in my room. They said they saw a man in shadows that was about my height. One day we also ran into the old owner, and my mom casually asked the lady if she had ever experienced anything in the house. The lady started crying and said no one believed her, but yes, she experienced a lot of stuff. I moved out around that time. I do not miss that place.